Hey, hey, and welcome to another Tech Tuesday. This is Chad from Ascension Worship. And this week, we're talking a little bit more about the free lighting program, Champs' Magic Q, and how to group your lights. Hey, 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 what do you say? Yes, it's that time again. It's Tech Tuesday. So we've been talking about this free lighting program called Champsis Magic Q, or Campsis if you're from the UK and want to pronounce it correctly. Um, but we've been talking about how to get into it and how to get the most of your functionality. Um, very basic um, starting uh, tutorials for you here. Uh, but a couple of weeks ago, we talked about how to patch your lights. Well, now that you've got the lights patched in, you're going to want to set them up into groups so that you can control sections of the room or certain uh, vibes that you want to get. So, for example, you might want to have one group that will control eight different dimmers that control all the house lighting that's going on in the room or one group that affects all the color LEDs in the room. There's a whole bunch of different ways you can do it that's going to help you to uh, get the most out of what you're, you're programming. So for today's example, kind of like we did a couple weeks ago, uh, I've got three lights behind me. Uh, I've got two uh, Chauvet color rails um, that are technically going to count as eight lights, really nine lights each because there's going to be a dimmer for each um, each entire rail. And then the, the light itself is going to break into eight different sections that you can change it, which, which is really cool. Um, but it does mean that we're going to see a lot of palettes to work with in Champsis. Uh, so we've got two of those, and then we've got a um, pretty standard um, Tri-12, which they don't make it anymore, but it's a um, just like a basic RGB um, LED par can. So like a lot of churches are going to have. Um, so even though there's only three lights, it's going to count as a total of 19 different palettes. Uh, so what we're going to do today is show you some ways, at least in this little example, that you can group those and have some different controls over them. So looking at Champsis on here, um, one thing that's really cool that it does is it makes auto groups for you. So once I programmed them in, it automatically made groups um, to kind of help you get started. So we can see on here this group one, and uh, it says Slimpar Tri-12 IRC, which is the, the little par can in the middle behind me here. And you can see up here, it's got the number one. This means that of all the different heads that are available, which again, there's a total of 19, there's only one in this group. So for us to see that, we can click on the group. And now that we've done that, this group tab is selected. So all these um, soft keys that are up here uh, are showing the settings that are available to the group tabs. Um, this one up here says view head. So if I click on that, this is very much like our patch list that we saw a couple weeks ago. This has all the different fixtures available. And the ones that are highlighted, which in this case is the slim par, is the one that that group will affect if we turn the intensity up or change colors or whatever. Um, so let's test that real quick. So I've got that selected. I'm gonna just turn my intensity up here and boom, you can see we've got a very bright light behind us. And then all of our colors are working as well. So that's good. I'm going to hit clear and get out of that. Here's our clear button over here, CLR. And hit layout one, just get back to our top page to work with. Again, looking at our auto groups here, um, this one says color rail and has 18 fixtures. That is affecting all the color rails behind me. So if I had two, if I had eight, if I had 30, doesn't matter. They're all automatically grouped in there for us. Um, including all the different sections and all the different dimmers. Um, so again, I can click on that, click on view heads, and you can see everything is selected except for the slim par because that's got its own group. Um, and again, we can test that. We can turn our intensity up, change our color. And again, you see all the different groups are changing. Now within this group, I could take and select any one of these you know, little head fixtures here and change just its color. And you can see that very top um, light has changed. Or again, I can do groups. Um, I can hold down shift and just randomly select different colors here and change those as well. So this is all the individual lights, but on our heads page, I'm sorry, our groups page, and again, I click on the group tab, I hit view groups, or if you get lost, you can hit layout one and that'll usually take you back to the top. And from here, again, I can control all those groups together. 
Again, looking at what champs this gives you as a default. This next one here, I'm not quite sure what MN stands for, but these are the dimmers. And again, we can click view heads, we can see the first light in each uh, each head. So head two is that top color rail that's up there. Head three, you see H3 is the bottom one. Um, but that's just controlling the intensity, the the dimming of the lights as a whole. Um, but you do not have color controls on those. Again, if we hit clear, go back out to layout one. This last one here is just all the RGB. Um, so again, opposite on this, the intensity has no control. But if the intensity is turned up on the uh, this group here, then you'll see the colors there. So that's just what you would get from default. So what I want to do is I want to make this a little bit more manageable for me and for how I'm going to be programming. So the first thing that I would normally do just to be able to test all the lights and make sure that everything's working is I would make an all group that has every single light that we've got, and then we could just test those all together. So to do that, really easy, I'm going to click, I'm going to hold down the shift key. And I'm going to select all my groups. Um, you could... As an inverse to that, you could do that on the heads page, but obviously that would take a lot longer. Now that I have all these selected, I want to record onto this palette right here um, in all uh, settings. So it's really easy. I've got them selected. Go down here to the rec or record button. Hit that. And the fastest way to do it is while that button is ready, before you click where you want it, just type in the name you want. So I'm going to type in all. And again, we can see down here what we've typed. And now I'm gonna click, and there it is. And you can see it says 19, because it has all those 19 fixtures in there. So if I select that, I can control all the lights at the same time. So that's the basics. Um, again, for your church, you're gonna wanna set this up for whatever works best for you and for your room. Um, for example, you might wanna have, um, you know, a group that's all the LEDs, color LEDs that are on the stage, but then you might want to have another group that's going to be um, just the LEDs that are on the drummer or just the LEDs that are on the, you know, the worship leader. You can do all kinds of different groups and you can have lights be in multiple groups. That's fine. You just have to know when you click on it, what it's going to affect. Um, so just for fun, while we're here, uh, I'm going to do a couple variations of groups, especially with these color rails here. Um, so, what I would do um, to kind of keep this interesting and uh, give myself a little bit more control rather than just controlling all the rails together is I'm going to make groups for each rail and then I'm going to break them into um, to halves. So let's do this. Let's click on our color rail group. So we've got all the color rails selected. I'm going to click on view heads here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to deselect the second group. There we go. So I'm gonna hold down shift and deselect this second color rail here. Go back to my groups, hit record, and I'm gonna call this rail one. And there it is. And again, you can see now I've got control over just the top one. Now let's, um, Again, go back to my group, so I've got those selected. Right, let's do this. Let's go back to selecting all the color rails. View heads. And now I'm going to deselect the, um, the top rail. Again, I can click on view groups, or again, if you get lost, layout one. Record. I'm going to call this rail two. And now I've got control over that one independently. And then let's go ahead and break these into halves. So click on rail one so that all those are selected. And uh, this first group, because the lights are kind of facing the wrong direction, um, we're going to deselect the first four. Or as an inverse, I could select and hold down shift what I want to add. Now, one thing that's important that I've found is when you're selecting these colors, um, do them in proper order. 
so if I were to go and do, um, you know, this one, this one, this one, this one, if you do effects later on, the effects will go in the order you selected them in. Um, so it is important that you do them in proper order. Um, and you can always change that later on. So we've got that selected. We can go layout here. We'll call this just one. Go back to our heads. And then two. I'm going to show you, if you forget to hit the number before you click on here, it's going to give you a dot, dot, dot. Um, that just shows that there's something there, but you haven't named it. Um, so you can name it later on. There's um, a couple ways you can do that. This button down here, it says set. Right down here. You can click on that. You can click on the palette you want. And it gives you a little window. We can just hit two. And then there we go. Or, again, to save a little bit of time, um, you can hit set. Type in what you want to name it before you click on it, and then just click on it, and it'll it'll name it automatically. So you've got a couple ways you can do that if you forget or do it out of order. Um, but doing it beforehand is just the fastest way when you're trying to do a lot of stuff. So, again, first group here. You can change that to one color. Second group to a different color. Let's do the same for rail two. So I'm going to... Deselect these so the bottom four are selected. Oop, there we go. One. Select the top four and not the bottom four. Record two. And then same deal. We've got control over these however we want. And you can mix and match this however you want. If for fun, maybe I want to do... Um, like diagonals. So I'm just going to make up a name. I don't really care. We'll change that later. <laughs> Select those two. Record. Ba ba ba. And now we've got diagonal groups set up. So depending on how your lights are set up around the room, you can do some really fun things with this kind of stuff. And uh, like I said, these particular lights uh, come into groups of eight. Um, so we did an install at a church where their youth room, they wanted to have a whole bunch of these all the way around the room, um, shining down from the ceiling onto the walls. So the walls would, would be an ambient color and they could change them. They could do all these cool chase effects. It was a lot of fun. But in the middle of the wall, there was a like a prayer board set up that they wanted to have lights on it, but they didn't want that to be the same lights because they wanted it to stand out a bit. So we made uh, a group that controlled all of the color rails around the room. We made a group that controlled um, just the bulletin board, and then we had a group that controlled all the lights except for the bulletin board. So that way you had the most programming options available to you. Um, and also that, that bulletin board didn't line up exactly with the, the lights, so we had to change, you know, it was eight of this light and then two of this light, and then six of this light were over the bulletin board, and then the next set. So you can do some really cool things with these if you, uh, if you play around with it. So I hope this is helpful for you. Um, again, we build this show off of what people are asking for and questions that you have. So please feel free to email me at techtuesday at ascensionworship.com. We want to make sure this is useful for you. So if you have questions, let us know. That'll help us decide what shows we do next or if this is even interesting for you at all. I mean, if not, we can focus on something else. So um, please continue to comment and uh, like, subscribe, share it with your friends. We want to make sure this is a resource that helps the local church. Until next time, have a great week. Again, this is Chad from Ascension Worship. I hope this has been helpful for you and your team. Come back here every Tuesday for new information.